How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the play of week one wild card by week, whatever you want to call it, elimination week one, uh, <laughs> weekly roundup for the elite battle league. Uh, these two matches were, in my opinion, two of the best matches of the season. I just had a ton of fun watching them. You guys can go watch my live reaction. Uh, the live stream should still be up. Uh, I was just blown away by how good these matches were. They were both really good. They were nail biters, uh, very tactical and very, very, very entertaining matches. Um, I, like I said, I'd argue two of the best matches of the season. But of course, I am your host, a lonely hermit, and I am joined by my co-host. And for him, oh. he's not he's not here this week. Guess he's not as dedicated as I am. <sighs> no, I'm just kidding. He's prioritizing school right now, which is what he should be doing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just me. Uh, his links, I guess, will still be down below. You know, he's not doing anything this week. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> the links for all the other coaches will be in the description down below. Be sure to go and watch the full matches. Uh, watch them in their entirety because it's, it's absolutely worth it. Trust me. Um, the, the, the gameplay I put above us when we're talking on these weekly roundups does not replace the game. You should always go watch the matches because, especially this week, because my goodness, they, they're just so freaking good. Um, so speaking of the matches, let's hop right into it. The first one that I watched was Atlanta, the Atlanta Bravery versus Detroit Luxray. The Atlanta Bravery, the number four seed, Detroit Luxray, the number five seed. Atlanta walked away with a 6-4 win, a pretty, pretty good win. Um, to start off, Detroit went off with a rebound B. Atlanta went off with a Kelder. That's how they started. Um, I saw Ribble B's sticky webs coming from 10 miles away. And then my thought process was, ah, my wire got stuck on me. My, my thought process was like, oh, trick room, right? You know, we saw it happen with Crobats, although that sticky webs was by accident. Um, a, you know, a trick room would, would be huge, but uh, Stone forgot he had trick room on Dialga. At least that's what he told me when I was you know, live reacting to it. Uh, he forgot he even brought trick room on the Dialga. You probably could have switched out, set up the trick room, and that sticky webs would have helped like crazy. That trick room would have been great. But regardless, he still played well. Um, the robot B does get one shot by the Kinkelder from Poison Jab, uh, but it did its job. It got up sticky web. Um, Detroit did return with their own kill. Metagross did kill Kinkelder, I believe, with a Zen headbutt. I'm not sure. Uh, and it also killed Mamoswide, which was big because that's that's just, uh, just some good back to back kills. Um, but the big thing was that Mamoswine got it down to 4 HP. That was a really big play. Uh, I can't remember what move it used. Uh, I think it might have been EQ. And it got the Metagross all the way down to 4 HP. That was really close. That could have been a big turning point if, if the Metagross went down. Um, but instead the mammoth swag goes down although like like I said Atlanta did win this match But that could have been a huge momentum shift earlier on um, Diaga does end the reign of terror for Metagross obviously it was only on 4 HP So Diaga does is able to end it um, and stone edge from Diaga does bring Galarian and Moltres who came in for the Metagross to one uh, or somewhere um, around there uh, but the Moltres did get the berserk boost uh, that special attack boost so Moltres kills Dialga However, Angel Slash is able to come in and, and finish off the Moltres. Uh, obviously, it's only on one HP, so there's that. Um, but then the Angel Slash dies to Salazzo. Like, there was just... I, I think that's what was so intense about this matchup, is there was just a lot of back and forth when it came to the kills. Uh, one person would get a kill, the other person would return it, and then that person would get another one, and then, you know, they would return it, and it just was so back and forth with the score, with the kills. It was so intense to watch. Uh, it was just really, really fun because of just how back and forth the match was. However, Stone said something really interesting um he said despite you know the scoreline i believe by that point they were down question mark question mark either they were down or they were e they were down by one or, or they were even on kills stone said that's exactly how he wanted to go to, to go though because um g max lapras comes in and kills salazzle togekiss and colossal which it one shot everything with the lap uh with the lapras uh, who was the week one playoff week one MVP or the playoff by week MVP, whatever this this week is called uh, playoff round one. Let's go with that playoff round one MVP was Lapras. Um, Stone said he just wanted to keep Lapras as long, uh, alive as long as possible. Um, and of course, the last three Pokemon he needed to go against were all weak to to Lapras. Salazzo being weak to the water, Togekiss being weak to ice, Colossal being quad weak to water. And of course, it did exactly what it did, what it was supposed to do. It was interesting because Colossal came in and even I was sticking it too. Matt said it. Uh, Max Guard was, was a thought there, but... Um, 
I don't know. Would it have made a difference? I don't know. Would Colossal in the long run have been able to kill Lapras? Probably not. Probably not. So I can see why Max went for the uh, the move, the attacking move instead of Max guarding. Um, or maybe he just didn't have Max guard. I didn't get to watch the other point of view. Um, so yeah, uh, G Max Lapras comes in and in its three turns of the G Max, it one shots everything and is able to finish off the Detroit Luxrays. And the Atlanta Bravery move on to the semifinals of the playoffs in the Elite Battle League. And man, oh man, they are on quite the hot streak. Quite the hot streak, man. You guys are, they're on fire right now. They probably, I'd say, I'd argue the hottest team in the league right now is the Atlanta Bravery. Uh, that's three straight wins over, over, over just, there were just three straight tough wins where they grinded it out. They played very tactical, played the match well. Their plan went to fruition and it just worked for them. So that's three straight for them and they're on a roll right now. So if I'm, you know, the, I believe it's Chicago has to face them. Yeah, if I'm the score bunnies, I'd be a little bit afraid, especially because the score bunnies were part of that three winning, three game winning streak. Um, Obviously, the Braviary handed the Square Bunnies their first loss of the season, so this is going to be really interesting with the Braviary. They are rolling. What do you think, Mike? Uh, I forgot. He's still not here. F's in the chat. <laughs> he, he'd probably, uh, this is, uh, that's the time where uh, Landon comes in and says something funny, and then we move on to the next match. So I guess we'll just move on to the next match because I'm not funny. Uh... <laughs> So <laughs> moving on to the Everglade Entes versus the Kentucky Kinglers, another just great match. To put it into perspective with this one, 10 minutes in, 10 minutes into the match, and still there was only one death on each side. 10 minutes into the match, there was still only one kill on both sides. It was a very tactical match. This one was based a little bit more around tanking, around a lot of switching and movement. Whereas the other one, they were just going blow for blow, and that's what made that one really fun. Although it was tactical, but it was a lot of blow for blow sort of things going on until the Lapras came in. Um, this one was just switching and moving parts and burning and this and that. There was just so many like tactical parts that came into it where they just weren't even like killing each other. They were just they were just moving pieces around. Um, it's like a chess game where like they're literally just moving pieces around without taking out anyone They took they each took out a pawn and then they just kept moving pieces around. That's basically how it was uh, But Everglades started off with Tyranitar, Drax, Tyranitar, Kentucky started with Snorlax and Snorlax hasn't had the best luck this season uh, it, But this match it probably had its best performance of the season despite the loss Kentucky did lose this match to time. I believe the final score was 5-3 if I remember correctly um, because towards the end, it, I mean, towards the middle is when it kind of felt like the Everglade were going to pull away with that one. Um, but, excuse me, towards the end was really when, like, okay, yeah, the, the Everglade are, are, are going to be walking with this one. Things would really have to go right for the for Kentucky. Um, so, Snorlax comes in. It times two body presses. You know, it gets off two body presses. It gets T-Tar, gets that kill. Snorlax was just tanking hits. And I think that's what made this match so entertaining was how Foos would work around Snorlax. Uh, I believe Derek brought the same team as he did last week, which may be a mistake. Hindsight. I mean, it did really well against them. Um, but you can't expect Foos to not change. That's exactly what we're talking about. That's exactly what I kept saying with this matchup is, is Foos is going to be really unpredictable because typically in back-to-back -back matchups, it's the loser who's the one that has the bigger advantage because, you know, they know their weaknesses. Uh, they know what they got to fix more so than the winners because, you know, they won. So... Everglade was always going to have the advantage in this one, um, but the, the tanky Snorlax I thought was really great But there was a lot of switch game like there was just a lot of switch game going on uh, Even Palkia couldn't even land too much of a hit on Snorlax and it was funny because Foos was Foos was getting frustrated at one point And it was like that's how everyone's been feeling when they've play, been playing against you They've been feeling like they can't beat any of your Pokemon. They can't kill any of your Pokemon. Now you know how it feels <laughs> It's just it was so funny to see the tables turn on him um, with the fact that he couldn't kill the Snorlax. And I think at one point he was like, it's just not like, it's just not taking damage. It's like, yeah, that's how everyone's been feeling against your team. Um, but even then, Snorlax rested at one point to get all its HP back. Um, and this is when the, the kill start, kind of started to come in. Derek switches to Lunala by Sharp. One shot, one shot to Lunala, which was a pretty big kill. Um, so he switches out to Glare and Dermanitan. Um, I was really hoping that Derek wouldn't EQ because Rotom Wash was, uh, 
was uh, still on the field, and we all know what happened last time. You know, there is that over prediction with the Rotom Wash and the EQ, which I don't think he ended up doing that. But what Derek did when Rotom Wash came out is he switched to Mimikyu, and Fus, I mean, the smartest thing he could do was click Will O Wisp. Uh, and this is where the match, in my opinion, kind of switched momentum towards the Entes because Rotom Wash gets the Will O Wisp off on the Mimikyu. Mimikyu got off the Swords Dance, of course. Um, so that was big because obviously Mimikyu dominated in the matchup between these two last week. So I, I figured Foos would come with something to deal with the Mimikyu. It'd be a huge mistake if he didn't. Um, so he comes with the Mimikyu. He comes with a plan for the Mimikyu, gets the Will O Wisp off. The Will O Wisp missed. That would have been huge. If Will Wisp did not land, that would have been huge. So Will Wisp lands on the Mimikyu, essentially cancels out the Swords Dance. Uh, but my this this is where it got really interesting for me because I, I don't know whether to call this a misplay or, or what, I don't know. But Derek decides to Dynamax Mimikyu. And even after it gets burned. So we learned our lesson with burns, especially when it came to the Atlanta Bravery. I'm sorry, Matt, I'm gonna bring it up. Uh, Mama Swine on the Rotom Wash. Uh, Mama Swine just did no damage, even Dynamax while it was burned on the Rotom Wash. Um, and Mimikyu did more damage, but it, it managed to eventually kill the Rotom Wash. But it, I mean, I, I dropped something, <laughs> but but me, like I I don't know I don't know if the best decision was to Dynamax the Mimikyu or just to let it go. Like I understand it did really well in the last matchup, but I don't know if Dynamaxing was the best decision with the Mimikyu after it was burned. Maybe Glare and Dynamax could come in and Dynamax. I don't know. Uh, maybe saving it for later. Maybe Dynamaxing Snorlax towards the end could have potentially stalled out the time, and maybe Derek would have had more health. I don't know. Hindsight's obviously 2020, so. I, that's why I say I don't know whether I can call that a misplay or not because we'll never really know how it would have worked out if you would have saved the Dynamax. Um, personally, for me, I wouldn't have. I would have just let Mimikyu go down. It's the same same thing we've seen with the Rayquaza from the Miami Dragonites. It got burned, uh, was it two weeks in a row? And he had to sack it off. That had to get sacked off um, because it was burned. There was no point keeping it alive. There's no point in Dynamaxing it. It's just really weak at that point. But Mimikyu did take out take out Rotom Wash, but Foos's goal was complete. Take out the Mimikyu. The goal was complete. Um, it was killed by Bishop to make sure it didn't do what it did last week. Uh, Glare and Dramatitan came in and EQ does not kill Rillaboom. So this was actually my favorite play, was that Glare and Dramatitan comes in at one point. Um, the Antes have Rillaboom on the field. And I believe Foos had said like, we're just gonna let Rillaboom go. It's okay. You know, we just want some chip damage off on the Dramatitan. However, Dramatitan EQs and it does not kill the Rillaboom, leaves it on 14. And the the craziest part was is Rillaboom grassy glides and it freaking kills Darmanitan. It was a crit grassy glide to kill Darmanitan. And that was huge. If the match wasn't already kind of shifting towards the Antes, that was one of the bigger turning points and Rillaboom does eventually go down to Corviknight, but it, it did its job. It took that hit from, from the Darmanitan and finished it off. That was huge. Uh, Palkia came into Dynamax to try and finish the last Mons, um, but even I forgot while I was watching it and Foos forgot that Snorlax was still alive. So Palkia could not take down the Snorlax before the Dynamax went away. So Snorlax effectively like really did well to, to just cancel out the Dynamax. Um, and that's where I say like, would it have been better if you had saved the Dynamax or Snorlax? Because it does go down to Spatial Ren from Palkia. It takes a nasty hit out of the Spatial Ren. Um, so that kill plus the flamethrower and Heracross to finish it off um, was enough to push Foos because they were 3-3. They were tied 3-3, but then Foos gets those last last kills on Storlax and Heracross and the Antes win. 5-3 goes to timer. Um, but what a match. I mean, like I said, you guys absolutely, if you haven't already, please go watch those matches because they were just incredible. They were so intense. They're exactly what we wanted to see out of this league. Um, every week, I think the matches have just keep, kept getting better. I'm so excited for I'm so excited for the semifinals. You guys understand, uh, but that win pushes Foos to the semifinals. Uh, unfortunately, Kentucky. I hate to say this, Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky is out of the Elite Battle League. They are done for the season. Um, so before we head into the predictions, I do want to give you a nice shout out to Kentucky and Detroit. You guys had, I mean, great seasons. Uh, Derek. You said you were gonna be garbage. You said you were gonna be last, but you know what? 
you impressed i think everyone in the league this season so this is this is my boy this is not biased okay uh because <laughs> uh, the reason i i kind of clinged on to derek moore was because he he downplayed himself so much at the beginning of the season so for him to turn around and actually do well he's making great plays throughout the season uh making smart decisions um clearly he's still got a bit to go he's still got a ways to go but he made a lot of progress this season and i'm proud of you dude uh and of course to max max what a turnaround i mean that that was an incredible turnaround for your season i know it might not necessarily have gone the way you wanted but you were 0 three but you turned it around you won two huge matches and you pushed you pushed the bravery that was always gonna be a tough matchup because both of you guys were on fire but you still pushed them you still fought every single match and mad respect to you because man uh you definitely turned your season around you definitely turned your season around man uh so congratulations i mean you guys had i mean congratulations to the two who moved on but to kentucky and detroit you guys had great seasons regardless and we're looking forward to see what you do next season so exciting um but looking for the semifinals, speaking on Everglade and Atlanta, big congratulations to those two for moving on to the semifinals. But now they have a date with the number one and number two seed. Miami Dragonites are going to be facing, are going to be hosting, I guess, if this was like a stadium thing, would be hosting the Everglade. Ente is the number one seed versus the number six seed. So it's a, uh, top versus the bottom. This is, this is a bit of a David versus Goliath sort of thing. And then the second matchup is Chicago versus atlanta the number two versus the number four seed so exciting but the first matchup miami versus everglade is gonna be a really tough one miami did get the win over everglade uh in week two it was a 6-4 win um very close match very close match but cinderace i believe um what is cinderace probably did something i'm sure cinderace did something almost every single week this season so uh let's see week two week two cinderace racked up three kills so it's the same it's the same thing for everyone come up with the game plan for the race that's it that's it it's too good it's really it's just too good to you can't ignore it you literally have to build your game plan around it there's no other way of saying it uh it's too good you have to work around it so if the Antes can come up with the game plan for miami for that center race then that'd be huge because again the only match well one of the matches they lost, Cinderace died, and the other one, Cinderace only got one kill. So, clearly neutralizing the Cinderace is, is a bit of an answer to, to, to take it down Miami. Maybe not the whole answer, because there's still quite a few other mods you gotta worry about, but it's definitely one of the answers, one of the keys to beating Miami. But, I don't know. I haven't really seen anyone effectively neutralize the Cinderace, except, like, misplays, I guess, have kind of been its downfall. Like, shifting game plans have kind of been its downfall. So, I, I'm i gonna have to side with Miami on this one. I wanna see the Cinderella story. Don't get me wrong, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be rooting for Foose. I'm gonna be rooting for him. But, unless he comes up with an effective game plan for Cinderace, I don't know. That's the, that's the hardest part. Um, but I'm rooting for Foose. I want that Cinderella story. The number six seed turning in that turn. That'd be a huge turnaround to the season if Everglade comes up. You know what? Screw it. Let's go with Everglade. Screw it. Screw it. Sorry. Sorry, one I'm going with the Everglade Antes. I want to see the Cinderella story come to fruition. I want to see the number six seed in the finals. Um, I, I want to see it. I want to see that Cinderella story in our very first season. I want them to go to the top. So we're going with the Antes. I know Landon. If Landon was here, he probably would. He probably would pick the Antes. I should have asked him for his predictions. I should have done that. But. We do have someone else's predictions here, which I'll tell you guys in a second. But yeah, I, I, I'm going to side with Everglades. I, I just want the Cinderella series. That's all. Um, so like I mentioned, we have someone else's predictions. The Commissioner, Stone Family 64 I asked him for his predictions while I was streaming. Uh, he went with some um, upsets, I guess, uh, by the seeding, not really by anything else. Because um, on any given day, anyone can be anyone in this league. Um, so every, he actually said Everglades beat Miami 6-3. So straight from Stone Family 64, uh, that's a pretty hefty margin. Miami losing by that much would be pretty, pretty uh, shocking. I mean, the closest they came to that was when they lost the score bunnies 5-3. Um, but realistically, if Toxapex had died, it would have been 6-3. So that's the closest they've come to a loss like that. So that'd be their biggest loss of the season. Uh, and I think the Antes would have to come up with a pretty good, a good plan. And it would, it would definitely have to go off like without a hitch so 
that's an interesting prediction to go in 6 3. I'm done predicting scores. I'm over it. I'm getting them wrong all the time. I'm getting the predictions wrong, so there's no point doing scores anymore. Uh, so I'm rolling with the Everglade. I want to see the Cinderella story. Let me, let me know down below what you guys uh what your guys' predictions are for that matchup. Uh the second matchup of the semifinals uh is going to be the Chicago score bunnies versus the Atlanta Braviary. I'm I'm very impressed with, with that ladder right now. Stone, this goes straight to you. I've been very impressed with you guys. Uh, three straight weeks, three hot performances, and I'd argue Atlanta Bravery, I said it earlier, the hottest team in the league right now. So I'm gonna side with them. They're gonna be going against the Chicago score Marines. That's not necessarily like cold, but they haven't played for a week. Uh, Atlanta's hot. They Clearly Matt's really starting to understand his team now. Um, he's really figuring them out and even without Trick Room, he's still doing well with his team. So this is going to be a very tactical match. I think I think of the two, I think that one's going to be the more tactical match. I think the other one might be a little more back and forth, but I think that one might be the more tactical match. Who knows? That one could, I don't know. It's hard to predict, but I think just because the Atlanta Bravier are hot, plus they beat Chicago a couple weeks ago. And although that doesn't mean too much, uh, because obviously Kentucky beat Everglade and then Everglade beat Kentucky. So it's not it's not that much of a big deal um, But regardless Atlanta is hot right now and I gotta go with the hot team I'm going with Atlanta Bravery over the Chicago score is I think it's gonna be number four This is number six, which I think would be awesome to see in the finals to see the to see two bottom of the table And this is not shade or anything. I'm just it's just where you guys are at the table Two bottom of the table teams the fourth and six seed be in the finals I'd, I'd love to see that that huge Cinderella story taking down the one and two seed despite them getting a bye week They still uh, you know go down. Uh, I want to see that I want to see Everglade versus Atlanta if I remember correctly that matchup was actually pretty good as well um, when they played each other Oh, never mind. It was that. Sorry, sorry, Matt. That was the mammoth swine. Never mind. Sorry, Matt. I didn't mean to bring it up. Uh, so I'm very interested to see that matchup um, because on paper, on paper, judging by the first time they play each other, it'd be an easy matchup for the Everglade. A preferred matchup, but obviously things have changed since then. It's been a few weeks, <laughs> so I'm siding with Atlanta. They're the hot team right now, so I'm going with the two lower seeds to take take down the two top seeds. Um, and with the commissioner's predictions, he is backing himself this time. Last time he said that he was not going to beat the score buddies, but this time he is backing his, himself. Uh, and he said a 6-5 win over Chicago, which I agree. I think I think both matches are going to be pretty close. I don't really see them, unless the game plan is just that good, I don't see them going like over 6-4 or under 6-4, I guess, technically. 6-4, um, 6-5, six, six, or maybe even like 5-4, five, 5-3. Five, um, I could see I could see maybe one of them going to time again, um, but These two matches if, if if the round one matches were anything to go off of these two matches are gonna be freaking incredible dude I'm so excited as you guys should be too um, That's gonna be it for everything here. Be sure to check out all the coaches in the description keep an eye out for Saturday There's gonna be semifinals and then one more week and we are in the finals. I'm so excited for this Saturday I can't freaking wait. I'm so freaking excited um, I'm gonna be doing a sleep lock, but I think at some point uh, I'm going to just pause it and watch the matches because that's how freaking excited I am uh, Or maybe we'll start the stream by watching the matches. I don't know. We'll see uh, But I'm so excited as should you be It doesn't make sense <laughs> as you guys should be too as I Can't I can't English I, English is my fourth language um, It's not I'm just kidding <laughs> Um but yeah, be sure to check out all the coaches in the description. Be sure to go check out their channels. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, I mean, obviously, you should still t check out the coaches that are going to be participating this week in the playoffs. Uh, but the four channels, uh, Crobats, One Echo Gaming, uh, Free Sword Dab, and Stone Family 64. That's where you're going to find the matches. Um, and man, just get hyped. This is going to be an intense week. And I'm super freaking excited as you guys should be too. My, I have been, my name is, I was going to say, but I can't speak English right now. Um, <laughs> I have been your host, Lonely Hermit. Uh, I'll put his links down below. I probably put like a screenshot or something. I don't know. I'll put his links down below. Um, even though he wasn't here, <laughs> I'll put his links down below. Um, so be sure to check out Inferno Man as well. He's my normal co-host. I'm sure he'll be back for the semifinal playoff. Uh, roundup because it's too exciting to not be back for it. Um, but yeah, be sure to check out all the links in the description. I uh, appreciate all of you and get it hyped for that semifinal matchup. Woo! For these semifinal matchups. Woo! See you guys later. Hope you all have a great day. Bye.